Let's do it. The following presentation is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Yes, it is. Viewer discretion is advised. Radio from the heart of America now. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. Yes, it is controversial, and yes, I am back, and I'm pumped. Welcome to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. We're broadcasting live today. Of course, we've got a great lineup for you. Mike Zulo coming up in just a few moments. The lead investigator under the former sheriff, Joe Arpaio of Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. The dude that's in the office out there now, Mike Pinzone. I think it's Mike. It's Pinzone. I can't remember his first name. I'll get corrected on that in just a moment. But anyway, Pinzone, uh, in my humble opinion, <clears throat> wow, what a fruitcake. <laughs> I mean, he's putting his folks out there in Maricopa County in danger. He's saying to the illegal population, you are considered guests in our county. Really? Really? So tax evaders, see, that's a federal law. They're considered guests as well. Income tax uh, thieves and, uh, you know, hoodwinkers and scandalers, they're considered guests. They, they get protections. Because, see, that's a federal law. See, what Penzone's doing is trying to hide behind that and say, well, you know, it's a federal law. We don't enforce that. You're a guest here. Really? So federal law means nothing, even though you don't enforce it. Folks, anyway... Um, I, I digress. Listen, I'm going to bring Mike Zula up in just a moment. There's some amazing stuff going on in the news. You talk about fake news. And Mike's going to give us, the, we're going to talk about the very latest in the birth certificate case and some of our opining and some speculation and some and some facts, of course. Uh, but, the, but the very latest, I mean, there's a birth certificate that has hit the Internet. Again, it was featured on Drudge for two days. So, I mean, this is not like some back-channel conspiracy thing, although we'll unfold what we think it really is. But it's, a, it's supposed to be, it purports to be a photograph, if you will, uh, an internet photograph of Obama's Kenyan birth certificate. But if you go to Snopes, they say it's fake, and then they tell you why, and when you see what they say about how they know it's fake, this is going to blow you away, people. you got to hear this. By the way, everything we're talking about, you can go to freedomfriday.carlgallops on Facebook, and you can see it all. Everything we talk about, we post it there. But before I do, I've got to tell you, one of our Freedom Friday and PNN News and Ministry Network reporters just sent me an email. I haven't even read these articles, but I did post one of them on freedomfriday.carlgallops at Facebook, so you can read it if you want, and I'll get to it in the next break. But it says, Carl, breaking gateway pundits Lucian Wintrich just got accosted and shoved inside the White House by Fox radio clown John Decker. And then it says, our fake stream reporter starting to crack up. <laughs> so if you, it says here, witnesses confirm the attack. Apparently it's just happened in the last little bit. Photos and breaking coverage hitting Gateway Pundit right now. And um, let me just go to one of the headlines here. The headline, Gateway Pundit says, uh, multiple witnesses confirm the Gateway Pundit Lucian Wintrich was accosted in White House press room. And you can see the video if you want, and all that's at freedomfriday.carlgalps. I'll read the article. We'll get back to you in just a few moments on it. But right now, I want to go straight to the phone lines. Let me just ask first, Mike Zulo, are you there? Yes, Carl. How are you? I I'm doing great. So glad that you're with us. Folks, Mike Zulo, most of you know his name. He's kind of a household name now. Millions of people around the United States and around the world know that name. Why? Because he was the lead investigator, first appointed as the lead investigator of the Cold Case Posse. And then uh, after the Cold Case Posse was relieved of its responsibilities from that, Mike Zulo, under the authority of Sheriff Arpaio, uh, was the investigator working with uh, experts all over the world, actually. The case was broken concerning the Obama a fraud of the birth certificate that was posted on the White House website. Neither Mike Zulo nor Sheriff Arpaio have ever positioned themselves as birthers. They have both said that as far as this investigation goes, they don't care where Obama was born. Now, as American citizens, of course they care, and I care, and we all care, but the focus of this investigation was not where he was born, but focusing on that birth certificate, is it fake? Because that was the allegation. 
And so they investigated five years. They finally wound up, and I'll let Mike give you the details, that it absolutely was. They did a December 15th, just a few weeks ago, conference showing that it was fake, giving all the evidence, showing a video so that you could see how it was faked. They own, they have in their possession the original document or a birth certificate document from a woman named Johanna Ani, from which Obama's document was created. It's all been signed off on them by two international document expert entities, one in the United States, one in Italy. It's ready for the courtroom. It's ready for a congressional investigation. And that stuff may be happening. We, you know, and I'll let Mike talk about that, especially in light of what's going on with the deep state and all of that deep dark state and Obama and Spygate and CIA and WikiLeaks. Um, this thing may come to a head very soon. Uh, but um, that's why I brought Mike Zullo on, because we're going to talk about what has happened with this uh, Kenyan birth certificate. Mike, what, you want to tell the story of that? And I've got the article up. It's on our Facebook site, but I've got it right here in front of me on Snopes. Now, this article was posted a couple of years ago because that Kenyan birth certificate made its rounds back then. Orly Tate's got involved in it. Snopes got involved. And now it's been posted again. But the point you and I want to make is, is that what Snopes says about how they know it's fake. I'm going to let you tell the story. I don't want to rob your glory, man. Go ahead. Well, apparently, from what I understand from the report, is back in 2009, Orly Tate introduced a certified copy of uh, registration of birth out of the Providence in Kenya, I am assuming, into court claiming that this was proof positive that Barack Obama was born overseas uh, in the nation of Kenya. Mm -hmm. and, or, and as this was going on, it became relatively apparent that she did not have any evidence to corroborate the claim other than this purported document that was unsourced, given to her by an unnamed source who she claimed was in fear of their life and didn't want to provide any information. Mm -hmm. My understanding is Snopes, who we all know left-leaning Snopes, did an investigation, and according to them, which it's unclear how they did their investigation, there are no experts named, they made the determination that the document in Orly Tate's possession was an absolute forgery, right? and that it was taken from a different certified copy of a registration of birth out of uh, South Australia, I believe, Yeah, and they used that gentleman's birth certificate as the template to form this false forward, uh, for fraudulent document of Barack Obama's board, uh, birth in Kenya. Yeah. So, you know, you look at this and you start to say, okay, this is fake, that's fake, everything is fake. But what's the irony is here is Snoops comes out and says, that this is a fake document. They don't disclose any expert analysis. They don't disclose how they found that out. They don't disclose whether they had any official notification that it's fake from the issuing uh, authority. They just claim it's fake. But what is parallel to the investigation conducted by Sheriff Arpaio and myself is the same principle. We have an actual, original Hawaii certificate of live birth from a living human, human being who was in possession of it, and we have determined that that is in fact the template that was used to form and, and create the Obama fraudulent PDF file. Yeah, yeah. And we have proved it scientifically with verifiable experts, courtroom recognized experts, two different scientific disciplines from two different continents all come to the same conclusion that the Obama certificate is a forgery. Right. And now, you, we you, did you, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Me, Carl, we did a lengthy investigation. We've got certified reports from experts. I mean, ours is is sealed. We have our information. Mm -hmm. We have our ducks in a row. You got chain this of custody is coming out here and mm -hmm. just saying something. Mm -hmm. And you've got chain of custody. I mean, of all of your evidence including the original birth certificate, Snopes doesn't have any of that. None of it. No, and, and what's even better is we have, not only do we have the original birth certificate of Ani, but at least we have the state of Hawaii trying to pretend that they released that Obama PDF. Right. At least we have officials claiming to have released that fraudulent document. 
Right. Even though they don't want to take possession of the document, they don't want to step up to the plate and say, yes, we created it. They only want to verify the information contained in the document without verifying the document itself. Right. Which is so a, well, at least we have two avenues to pursue. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so that's the thing, Mike, is that it, it is that this <laughs> folks, in case you're confused by this, and I hope I hope you're not. I mean, Mike just did a great job of explaining it. And, and I thought I did a pretty good job of setting it up. But I know some people are listening don't have a clue what we're talking about because they haven't been keeping up with this. But the bottom line is, back in 2011, Barack Obama put a birth certificate on the government website and said, this is my official birth certificate. He went on television, on comedy shows and talk shows and made fun of birthers for, you know, daring to claim that he didn't have proper identification. And he kept referring to that birth certificate as his birth certificate. And in the meantime, the sheriff's office of Maricopa County got involved and it was an issue of... Um, of p perhaps voter fraud, et cetera. So they had they had official domain over that investigation in Maricopa County. So Sheriff Arpaio, 55-year lawman, for six terms as sheriff of Maricopa County, 24 years, um, the third largest sheriff's office in the nation, started a criminal investigation. Mike Zulo named as the lead and chief investigator. That investigation went on for five years. They had three, count them, three public uh, news conferences, presenting their information along the way, and the last one was just a few weeks ago at the end of the year, to, uh, December 15th, wherein they brought all of this evidence showing 1,000% that here it is. It's fake. They made a video to show you how it was faked. And people that have seen the video, even people who used to be non-believers, look at that and go, oh my gosh, this is impossible unless it was faked because everything is moved from Johanna Ani's document over onto a blank template in mathematical precision juxtaposition. All of the various elements belong to each other in a mathematical way. It's unbelievable when you see it with your eyes. By the way, you can go to freedomfriday.carl gallops and you can just look at the little three-minute synopsis of that hour-long conference, and you can see it with your own eyes. Then all of that information has been signed off on by two different, as he said, digital, I mean, excuse, document examination entities, one in Italy, one in the United States. They have issued official paperwork saying it's a forgery. And... And, and, and the bottom line is, here we are, sitting on top of all this information, plus a whole lot more we'll talk about after the break. And along comes yesterday on Drudge, the posting of this Kenyan birth certificate again, that Obama's half-brother, Mike, supposedly has released again. But Snopes, as Mike just said several years ago, has already said, oh, it's a fake. Well, how do you know it's a fake, Snopes? because you can see how it was created from another document. Well, isn't that what Sheriff Arpaio and Mike Zulo did from an official law enforcement investigation, third largest sheriff's office in the nation with all these experts signing off on it? They're sitting on a real case, and the media won't touch it, yet on this little fake case, Snopes presents itself as the world authority. Mike Zulo, did I say that right? Yeah, you did, Carl. And, and, you know, I want your listeners to understand something. I don't think this happened by accident. I no. think this is a PSYOPs campaign. Yep. I think there's a reason why they, they had this thing resurface. And just because it's his half-brother, that doesn't mean I give him any credibility. They start resurfaced this for a reason. And they know that the investigation that we conducted and concluded is sound and courtroom-ready. And they know that now with the exposure of the the deep state and the things that Donald Trump is doing, that if he ever decides to rev up his engines, yeah. that birth certificate issue has a... Oh, yes, it does. Mike, we're going to take a time out. When we come back, let you and me talk about the deep state and how it's tied to the birth certificate investigation. Because a lot of what we see happening on the news, you and I have already known about for years, right? So that's true. Absolutely. We're going to talk accurate. about that. We're going to talk about that. All right, folks, Mike Zulo on with us in this first segment. And uh, we're going to talk about the deep state and how that's tied to the birth certificate investigation and what may come out of all of this. Folks, this birth certificate investigation by Arpaio, it ain't over with yet. I'm telling you, folks, it ain't over with yet. This is amazing. You hang on. You're only going to hear it on Freedom Friday. You're not going to hear it on Fox. You're not going to hear it on Limbaugh or anybody's right here out of the horse's mouth. We'll be right back. You are listening to the Friday Night Takeover. 
Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, welcome back, Gulf Coast. Welcome back, America. Welcome back, world. And Mike Zulo, welcome back to the show. Folks, you guys are in the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. I've got Mike Zulo, the former uh, lead investigator with the Obama fraudulent birth certificate case under Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Maricopa County, former sheriff. Uh, Mike Zulo, so you you uh, uh, officially resigned from that position December 31st because the new guy that took over Paul Penzone, I mean, you, you you just you got out of there before he came in, right? Yeah, that's correct. I was finished uh, December 31st, uh, right before Sheriff Arpaio uh, vacated his office January 1st. Right, and so everything you're speaking now is not representative of the sheriff's office anymore in that sense. I mean, you know, official stuff that you gathered while you were working there is representative of your investigation with Arpaio, but you're not rep- you're, well, In other words, you're representing yourself right now in the things that you're talking about, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I have no offic- official affiliation, no affiliation whatsoever right now with the Maricopa County right. Sheriff's Office. Right. But let's just say, hypothetically, if Congress uh, opened an investigation on this and they subpoenaed you to come testify, you would testify to the verified information, uh, evidence that you have collected, chain of custody intact, under an official investigation of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office under the authority of Sheriff Joe Arpaio, and you would just testify that way, that you're former, and and that was all done under his reign, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Well, that's what I thought. And also, you know, so we talked, we, we, t- we kind of teased everybody about the deep dark, the deep state going on, the you know, the, the shadow government in Washington with Obama. But, you know, this goes back to what you were revealing, and I was reporting it with you, and but you're the one that did the investigation and found all this stuff and had the uh, informant come to you, but you were revealing several years ago that you had run across some deep, your words, deep, dark, universe-shattering information about what has really been going on in this nation at the deep, dark, shadow government level, and, and you couldn't really say anything else about it. And, of course, you took a lot of heat, and I took a lot of heat, most of it from Obots who were fishing to find out what we knew, and, and they still don't know all we know, and we still can't tell. We cannot tell all we know, but we can say now, because certain things have come out, that a lot of what people are watching on their television sets goes to exactly what we have known about, about government agencies using invasive spy uh, techniques upon U.S. citizens, and even, and we're not going to mention names, or at least I'm not, even upon people who are in high government offices right now. And we know that some of that was given to you, a lot of it, through uh, an NSA, former NSA and CIA contractor who was responsible for building and operating a lot of this software by the name of Dennis Montgomery, who right now has FBI immunity and is working with the FBI. I'm going to shut up and let you fill in all the blanks. Yeah, that's absolutely correct, Carl. And if you go back, you'll remember we were planning on having a press conference. I think it was around uh, the end of 2013 or something like that. Yes. And uh, then I had to come on and tell everybody that wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. And all I could say is a parallel investigation that ensued as a result of the birth certificate investigation has revealed some earth-shattering information, and I can't disclose it right now. Right. The longer that went on, it became extremely apparent of, of the level of infiltration that's been going on in the nation um, through Mr. Montgomery and his activities. He was a subcontractor for the CIA, NSA. Um, And a lot of information Mr. Montgomery was giving us at that point in time, it was a little tough to swallow because no one would ever think this kind of thing is going on. Right. And as you know, over the years, as these things now start to manifest, there was a lot of things that Montgomery shared with us that are that are being divulged today. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. I know. Not not everything. There's still some things he divulged that that the that have not hit headlines. But a lot of the stuff that he divulged has hit headlines. The ubiquitous spying, the invasiveness into people's homes and lives, and through televisions and and, and phones and everything else and other things we can't even talk about, and into people's very very personal lives, right into high-ranking government officials. I mean, he named names. He showed documents. I mean, unbelievable stuff. Yeah, it was it was actually it was it was breathtaking at 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 times. Um it was a very difficult period um dealing with that kind of thing. And then you know the there was that attempt in the uh civil 
contempt hearing of Sheriff Arpaio, where a federal judge out here decided to take the investigation and grandstand it um, in open court. Yeah. And effectively, you know, blowing that investigation up. Fortunately, we were able to get Mr. Montgomery not only to a federal judge, but eventually he did go and speak with the FBI. And it's public information now that Montgomery presented millions and millions of, of records that have been collected from uh, Americans without their knowledge by government uh, entities. And he now has both production and testimonial immunity. Now, you don't get that kind of immunity from the FBI. That has to come from the DOJ. Yeah. And they don't just hand that out like popcorn. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. So, so what you're trying to say is, or what I'm just going to say, and if I misspeak, correct me, but that this is serious stuff recognized by serious government officials that this is real and serious stuff, in spite of the fact that people have called you and me uh, conspiracy theorists and liars. Um, we're not. Oh, you, you hear it in my voice. Uh, it's very somber. It, you know, I, this, is, this is so bad. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm not at liberty to discuss a lot of this, but this is yeah. very dark, it's very deep, it's very bad, and it's very anti-American. Yeah, and, and listen, the music's playing, but the deal is, we're hoping and praying that very soon you will get to discuss it in congressional investigations and before the public, and that all this will be blown wide open. And I think that's what this Snopes Kenyan birth certificate smokescreen is about today, Mike. I really do. <laughs> I agree with you, Carl. Okay. I agree with you. We're going to have you back on soon. we got to go. we got to take a time out. Time flies. Mike Zulo, Carl Gallup, Freedom Friday. We'll see you in a few moments after this time out. Don't go anywhere. Mike Shoesmith will be up next. <laughs> 